This video deals with concepts of bandwidth. So finally, we'll just remind people of where this set of videos has been going. We've been looking at frequency response and why it's useful, how I compute it and how I represent it. And this video here, we're looking at why is it relevant to feedback loop analysis and design. And perhaps here, the real focus is on analysis. In particular, we're going to look how bow diagrams can be used to determine bandwidth and what bandwidth means, and then obviously why that's relevant to feedback loop analysis and design. First then, let's start with some definitions for bandwidth. Now, we'll emphasize a point here. Definitions do not need to be fixed. They might vary with the application, so you do need to be careful to know what definition you're using before you start. Now, typically, bandwidth is a range of frequencies for which gain is significant. And you might not like the fact that that sentence is a bit vague, but in one sense it's also quite precise because it requires you to say what does significant mean. So, what is significant? Typically, you'll find a lot of books use a definition of 1 over square root of 2 or minus 3 decibels as a definition of significant. Now, this could be relative to low frequency gain, so we're talking about a 3 dB drop-off compared to low frequency, or in fact, it could be absolute. Now, often you'll find that zero decibels may be easier to read, and often minus three decibels and zero decibels are pretty close together, so using either makes little difference. Now, often the bandwidth of interest is linked to the closed loop. And what we'll show later is there may be very little difference between the value you get from the loop transfer function, which is open loop, and what you get from the closed loop. So in summary, bandwidth is an indication of the speed of response of a system. So if you have a higher bandwidth, then you expect fast, faster transient responses. In other words, the loop can track higher frequencies. So generally speaking, if you're looking at system performance, a higher bandwidth is a good thing because it says you can respond faster. So here's an illustration of how bandwidth might be defined. You'll notice we've given the zero decibel line. Here it's marked in green. Um, so what we've said is one possible definition of bandwidth would be this range of frequencies here, which you see go from zero up to 20. And so that's where the gain is greater than zero decibels. Now, alternatively, you might say, well, what people normally do is they use minus three decibels. So if I mark in the minus three decibel line, here it is. Now, the key thing you'll notice is it doesn't take you much further. Rather than getting to 20, let's say you get to 28. or well, not to 20, not to 28. It's really much of a muchness when you're talking about frequencies. Now there is one final alternative, however. If you were to take bandwidth as a relative term rather than an absolute term, then you're comparing to the steady state up here. So a 3 dB drop-off then takes you to somewhere around here. And that looks like it's about 70 radians. No, not 70, sorry. 7. 7 radians per second. So you do need to be careful um, on what definition you're using. But the key thing here is when you see that game plot, you notice you can eyeball the bandwidth very, very quickly as soon as you know what definition you're talking about. Here's a different example, a loudspeaker. And what do you notice? You notice we've got significant gain in this range of frequencies here, which is about 100 radians per second to 3,000 radians per second. And in the other regions around here, the gain is very small. And that really tells you what bandwidth is about. The range of frequencies over which gain is significant. And I hope it's clear, just looking at these gain plots, that that range of frequency jumps out at you. You can just see where they are. Here's a different example of a conveyor system. And the question here is, what is the bandwidth? Now, as you will gather by now, there is no fixed answer. But typically, people would say, I'm going to use a relative 
definition which says I'm going to compare to the steady state. So if I do a 3 dB drop off, so if I mark that and say that's 3 dB, then the bandwidth takes me up to about here, which is of the order of 4 radians per second. And that would be about as much accuracy as I think it makes sense to do. Here's a different example. A suspension system is designed to reject high frequency disturbances, um, where high frequency here is defined as beyond 50 radians per second. Does the system meet the requirements? So what I'm going to do here is I'm first going to draw a 10 dB drop off. 10 is a bit of an arbitrary number, but that's a significant drop off compared to steady state. And you see there's the line marked in purple, and there's the frequency that you get with that, and that frequency is at 20 radians per second. Now, what you'll notice is once you get into this region here, there's a very fast drop-off of gain. Um, the slope is certainly of the order of 20 decibels per decade or 40 decibels per decade, and so we're dropping off rapidly, and we already had a 10 dB drop-off at this point here. If I look at 50 radians per second, let's just find out where it is, 30, 40, 50, 50 radians per second is here. And you'll see by this point, the drop-off is significant. So what you can say is the relative gain um, compared to steady state for frequencies 50 radians per second and beyond, we're talking about 25 to 30 decibels um, lower gain than steady state, and therefore you can probably argue that this unit is fit for purpose, i.e. the high frequencies are not amplified significantly. Now, what about feedback? Here's a typical feedback loop, the sort that we've used in many of the videos with a compensator and a system, and here's the associated closed loop transfer function, g over 1 plus gm. Now, if you have a closed loop system, it's normal to expect no offset to step targets in steady state. And what that tells you is that GC of 0 is 1 or 0 decibels. So here, we don't need to worry so much about the relative term because steady state is always 1, okay, or typically 1. And therefore, for the closed loop, significant can be fixed, it's going to be something like 1 over root 2 or minus 3 decibels. So what you'll find is for closed loop systems, bandwidth would typically be taken as frequencies where the gain is greater than minus 3 decibels, and that will explain why in the books this is often taken as a definition. So here's an example. You'll see I've got system G, 2 over S plus 4, an associated compensator, 2 times S plus 2 over S, and I've done the bode of the closed loop transfer function, which in this case would be GK over 1 plus GK. And here it is, and if I want to know what the bandwidth is, I simply do the 3 dB drop off, so there's minus 3. I draw my line across, and what do you get? You draw yourself down here, and that's about 2 radians per second. So in this particular case, you could conf confidently say that the bandwidth is about 2 radians per second. Now we want to do some estimation. We want to see, can we get to this answer a bit more quickly? What you'll have noticed in the earlier videos is that we were actually doing both diagrams of the loop transfer function, not the closed loop. And so consequently, it would be convenient, that's the key word, to estimate, that's another, so we're going to try and estimate bandwidth from the open loop boat diagram, and then we don't need to do the computations and the plotting of the closed loop. And that's what we're going to try and do here. So first of all, let's look at a typically well-tuned closed loop, and I'm going to do a typical Nyquist diagram. So if I do my typical Nyquist diagram, it's going to go through that green square, and what happens elsewhere doesn't particularly matter. But this green square is significant, because if <coughs> the loop is well tuned, I'll just do my unit circle around here, where is that green square likely to be? Well, here's the answer. I would expect this distance to be of the order of 1 over root 2, and the angle in here to be of the order of 30 degrees. Now, you will understand 
that these are approximations. Don't worry about that. Um, but we're saying typically you'll have the modulus of gm about 1 over root 2, the argument of gm about minus 150. Please note we have used approximate. We're not trying to say exact. And therefore, as a complex number, this is what gm will be. Minus root 3, minus j, all divided by 2 root 2. And so this is for a typically well-tuned closed loop, because you will always have the Nyquist diagram approaching the origin within this particular quadrant, and hopefully well away from the minus 1 point. The minus 1 point was marked here with this cross. Now, if I calculate gm over 1 plus gm, and I substitute in the value of gm we just had, there it is, and I go through the algebra, and I'm not going to dwell on this, what do you find? You find the closed loop gain is about 0.67. Now that's not exactly the same as 1 over root 2, but it's not far away, so it's pretty close to 3 decibels. So what does this tell you? It tells you if the open loop frequency um, bow diagram is giving you minus 3 decibels, then you're going to expect pretty close to minus 3 decibels on the boat diagram for the closed loop. That's assuming, obviously, a well-tuned loop. So what this means is you don't need to do the boat of the closed loop. You can read the minus 3d point, 3db point, from the open loop, and you won't be far wrong. What about the 0db line? Can we do the same sort of trick with 0 dBs? So again, if I do a sketch, and I didn't give myself a lot of space, but it doesn't matter. If I do a sketch here, put in my minus 1 point, put in my uh, unit circle, um, then typically, for a, a sort of well-tuned Nyquist, we're talking about angles here of around 60 degrees when the gain is 1. OK? So therefore, if I do this point here, as a complex number, I get this, minus 1, minus j root 3, over 2. Now, if I then do 1 plus gm, you get this, 1 minus j root 3, over 2. And the key thing here, I'll circle them both in red, is to compare this number and this number. And what you'll see is they've got the same amplitude. So the modulus of 1 plus gm is the same as the modulus of gm. So gm over 1 plus gm modulus is 1 or 0 decibels. So there's an interesting observation that if your open loop has an angle or phase of minus 120 degrees where the gain is 1, then the closed loop bowed will also have a gain of 1. Okay, so the open loop frequency giving zero decibels is pretty close to the closed loop frequency giving zero decibels. And we've emphasized again here for a well-tuned loop. So here's an example. You'll see I've given g equals 2 over s plus 4, s plus 2, k equals um, s plus 2 over s. And what you notice, if you look at the zero decibel point, they both intersect pretty much. So the open loop and the closed loop bow diagrams are pretty much in the same place for zero decibels. And you'll notice that this is a well-tuned loop because the phase of the open loop was around 120 degrees where you had zero decibels. Okay. So the other thing is, in this region around here, Okay, so if you're then looking at the minus 3 dB points, if I put minus 3 dB here and draw it across, again, what you'll see is the two are pretty close together. And you might say, oh, well, they're not so close as you think. But here's my argument. If you draw this one down, what's this? About 2.5. If you draw this one down, frequency about 3. And I would say... When we're talking about bandwidth, people aren't really going to fuss about the difference between 2.5 and, and 3. It's pretty much the same. You're really looking at orders of magnitude difference in bandwidth. So, here's a question. Can you estimate the closed loop bandwidth from an open loop bow diagram? And what you'll find is if you use tools like MATLAB, and you're using feedback tools, they will always mark the 0 dB line for you. There it is. You'll see it's marked for you. And the other thing is, they'll do this nice vertical line, 
where the 0 dB line cuts down and this frequency here which is the gain crossover frequency omega g so that's where the gain plot crosses 0 decibels is nicely marked for you there it is you don't even need to go and estimate it or calculate it it will tell you so if you can read the crossover frequency for 0 decibels without doing any calculation then you might as well use that as an estimate okay here's the keyword as an estimate for the bandwidth or for the closed loop bandwidth because the actual closed loop bandwidth will probably be within 10 to 20 percent and therefore this is a good enough indicator so conclusions we've illustrated that using boat diagrams um, you can estimate bandwidth very easily okay we've noted that the definition of bandwidth is to some extent subjective so you've got to be careful about your definition before you start so it could be absolute for example frequencies where gain is greater than minus 3 db or 1 over root 2 or even in some cases for convenience you find using 0 decibels gives pretty close to the same answer it could also be relative so you might be looking at the drop off compared to for example the steady state but we have noticed that if you're talking about closed loop then the steady state tends to be 0 decibels and so the absolute and the relative are the same okay so there you are for closed loop it would be normal to have a steady state of zero so the minus 3 db, db point is a good indicator of bandwidth and what we've said is this can be inferred to a good degree of accuracy from open loop boat plots as long as you're not looking for decimal places in your answer that will be close enough and the key thing here is the gain crossover frequency is often given automatically so if you're using the open loop bow plot and the gain crossover frequency is given it saves you extra computation